Hey, what's up, guys? So I'm going to talk to you guys about how I passed the NSCA CSCS test. I got this fancy paper. Um, I'm going to give you guys some strategies for what I did to study, and then uh, five or so things that you guys can do to study that I would think would help you. It is a tough test, but if you put the time into it, study and really learn the concepts, you can definitely pass. So let's go ahead and get into that. All right, so the main study tip I have is to read this book. This is the Essentials of Strength and Conditioning from the NSCA. The test is literally directly from this book. So this book is dense. It's about, oh, I don't know, a little over 600 pages. It's quite academic in the text. Um, there's a lot of like research that they mention, and it's not easy to read. There are a lot of diagrams that are helpful to like understand things, but it is a dense text. I would go through it chapter by chapter, and I would actually start towards the back of the book in the programming section. I think that's the section that's most applicable. All right, so my biggest recommendation is make sure that you understand what you're writing down. Don't just meaninglessly try to remember numbers because memorizing numbers, if you don't understand what they actually mean and how they relate to athletes, will not help you on this test. So whether it be a nutrition concept, a hormone, an aspect of physiology, whatever it is, make sure that you're really, really thinking and, and trying to relate it to yourself, relating it to athletes and understand that concept and not just memorizing numbers. So to give you some background, I went to Ohio State for an exercise science degree. You don't have to have an exercise science degree to do well on this test or to do well in the field of strength and conditioning. Uh, I did personal training for about three years while I was there, I'm working, I don't know, anywhere from 10 to 20 hours a week, doing personal training and group fitness as well. I think that really helped me get the practical application part of this. So I think some background in either strength and conditioning, personal training, group fitness, working with people in some way, and physically tweaking people's form and writing programs, anything like that will really help you on this test. So there are two portions to the CSCS test. There's an exercise science portion and then a practical applied portion. This is my score sheet from the test, uh, showing that I passed. This is the practical applied portion of the test, which was 110 questions. Uh, you needed 84 correct answers out of 110 to pass. Uh, I got 94. Um, I got like 36 out of 38 on exercise technique, 34 out of 39 on program design. Um, and then it breaks it down to organization and administration, 9 out of 13, testing and evaluation, 15 out of 20. So they basically have 110 questions on those four categories. Again, that represents what is in the textbook. A lot of the exercise technique questions were questions with pictures. Someone doing a kettlebell exercise and they will ask you, does this person need to lock out the elbow? Does this person need to extend the hips farther? Does this person need to, you know, and they'll give you, they'll give you choices like that. Uh, a lot of that came down to practically helping people with their form in a kettlebell class that I taught as a group fitness instructor or as a personal trainer. Um, if you haven't had that hands-on experience, it's hard to look at a video or a picture and know what you would tell this person. Whereas if you've had that experience for a year or two especially, you kind of know like, okay, th that's what your eye goes to is, is their elbow or their hip or whatever. So that's definitely important, especially for the practical and applied portion of the exam. We also have the scientific foundations portion, which is like the exercise science part of the exam. It actually encompasses exercise science and nutrition, and it's a lot more heavily weighted on exercise science. So there's actually 59 questions exercise science, 21 questions nutrition. So you can see on this portion of the test, you need 56 out of 80 to pass. So the exercise science portion of the test breaks down anything from muscle physiology, things about cardiac physiology. The program design, again, is more on the practical application part. So for example, those 20 nutrition questions come directly out of the nutrition portion of this book. 150 or so pages are just straight nutrition. Again, the NSAA doesn't want you to be a registered dietitian with an entire degree. That's not your scope of practice. But they do want you to have a foundational understanding of the science of human nutrition. So this is things like macronutrients, meal timing stuff, caloric calculations based on like lean body mass, stuff like that, as well as like eating disorders and things that you would come across as a strength and conditioning coach. So again, this is focused on really like a fundamental understanding of human nutrition. One of the more difficult portions of the exercise science portion of this test is bioenergetics, and that's basically the body's use of energy. This is stuff like glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, oxidative phosphorylation, lactic acid cycle, all of these like kind of bigger scary words some people if you don't have an exercise physiology background. The text is very uh, heavy and intense in terms of 
how much information it gives you on bioenergetics. So my recommendation is really to go zoom out and get the big 10,000 foot view of what is bioenergetics? What is the very basics of these processes? Uh, I would use things like YouTube videos for this. If you specifically search glycolysis on YouTube and just go for like a five minute video or something that really just explains the basics of it and then just try to relate that back to exercise science and like actually working with an athlete. Like what does glycolysis mean to an athlete? And that's the kind of questions that you want to ask yourself to really understand these concepts enough that you can go and take this exam and do well. Alright, so the way that I studied for this test was I basically took this book and then started at page 1 and I read up to about page 80 and then just took notes on a notebook paper just like this, like a three subject notebook and I just went through page by page and took out all the important points and just wrote it down in a notebook. I would do about 80 pages a day and I did that for, did that for about two weeks and then I just took the test. Uh, that was during my senior year of exercise science, so I did have a background. Most people cannot study for this test in two weeks. So what is a realistic study time for this? If you have an exercise physiology background, and you know the majority of this material, but you just are trying to work out the NSCA's exact numbers and some details, you can study for this test in two to three months, realistically. If you're studying um, about five hours a week to ten hours a week, you can study for two months or so and then take the test. So if that's your background, I would sign up for the test so you have a date that you have to do it and then keep yourself accountable for one to two hours of studying a day for that two months and you can definitely pass this test. If you don't have an exercise science background, it might take you around six to eight months plus to study for this test. I would give yourself at least three to four months of an internship or a lot of shadowing and then at least four to six months of studying pretty intensely for this test. If you're working, that might, it might honestly take you a year to study for this test. If you're working and you can only manage 10 hours of study time or shadowing time per week, um, that, it might take you a year to study for this test because there is a lot of detail and that's on purpose. They want to make sure that they're putting out quality certification that only people who are really qualified to take athletes in their hands and be responsible for them are actually getting this certification. But for most people, I would recommend the following five tips. So the first one is getting a strength conditioning internship. I actually did an internship with Ohio State Varsity Athletics after I took the CSCS test. So if I didn't pass that first time during my senior year, I would have just done the internship, gotten some more experience, and then went and taken it again like right as I was graduating. So I do recommend the internship. It gives you a really good idea of what coaches actually do so that you know if you should actually be taking this test and pursuing that career. At least do some shadowing. So at least email a strength and conditioning coach. Search a university or whatever setting you want to work in private practice. Whatever setting you want to work in, search for a strength and conditioning coach that you want their job and then go shadow them. For me, I spent about 500 hours shadowing in an internship. So that's, that's a ton of time. I mean, that took like four months and it was more than full-time hours, you have to really put yourself out there and get experience in this field. And that's the best way to get a job and get connections and network in the field also. So be willing and prepared to spend a ton of time shadowing and getting experience if you want to get into this field. All right, my second tip is joining a study group. So especially for something that's this intense and like a thick book of intense material, it is difficult to just sit down and start working on it, especially if you're working and doing another job. So join a study group and get some accountability that way. We actually have a Facebook group that I am moderating. So we post practice questions in there. Uh, I do Facebook Lives where I'll just teach for like 20 minutes on exercise physiology or cardiac physiology or something like that. So actually that is in the description. So go ahead and click on that, request to join our group and we'll approve you and use that group to help you learn. You know, if anyone like myself is, is a CSCS already and willing to give you guys information for free, take advantage of that. My third tip is to use YouTube and Google to learn one concept at a time. So this is really important. You can't just Google nutrition and hope to learn anything meaningful for this test. You can't just Google cardiac physiology and really expect to learn something from a video. Uh, what I would say is get one topic out of the book, so whatever chapter that is, that you find one topic that you want to learn, say the Carvonin formula. You can get a good YouTube video of the Carvonin formula and really understand that, but you can't understand all of, of a giant you know, concept or chapter 
just from a video. So one concept at a time if you're going to use resources like Google and YouTube. Fourth tip is going to be track your macros. So even if you have no interest in nutrition and bodybuilding or anything like that, spend some time, download the MyFitnessPal app and track your macros as accurately as you can for at least two months. So this will give you an idea of what is your protein intake in grams? What is your distribution of protein, fats, and carbs? How does that compare to what recommendations you're reading about in the text? So if you're looking at a recommendation for strength athletes to eat one and a half to two grams per kilogram body weight of protein per day, that, that might mean nothing if you just read that and just keep reading and keep reading. Like you could read that 10 times over and still have no idea what it means. But if you track your own macros, you know that, okay, I'm eating, I don't know, 200 grams of protein a day, and then you can calculate your body weight in kilograms and then actually find out, is that within the recommended window for strength athletes? Is that recommended for if I was an endurance athlete? And you can compare yourself to those numbers that you're reading about, and that makes it so, so much easier to remember. So track your macros and then do the calculations you come across on the book on yourself. And my fifth tip is follow a strength conditioning program. So if you've never followed a program with percentage of one rep max, periodiz periodized progression schemes, and, and some organization to it, whether it be like a preseason program, a, an in-season program, um, a GPP program, if if you've never followed a program, it's going to be really hard to understand the programming chapter of this book. Uh, this is a certification that allows you to be a certified strength conditioning specialist. You probably shouldn't pass the test if you've never followed a program before. So what I would recommend is find a strength conditioning coach, email them and say, hey, I'm learning about programming. I'm studying for my CSCS test. Uh, do you have a program that I can follow to learn from? Follow it and, and put in your one rep max. Calculate your... Uh, sets and reps, calculate your volume, um, think about like wh how is the program progressive, how does it fit in line with the programs that the NSCA recommends for someone who's preseason, um, is this program that I'm doing now, is this appropriate, would I give this to someone um, who's a lacrosse player postseason, like w where does this program fit into an athlete's program. Take time, follow a program, follow multiple programs, get programs from different strength and conditioning coaches, and then relate that to what you're reading in the textbook and you'll learn so much more from it. I actually have one on my website themovementsystem.com if you just go on there and go to free resources and you can just download an Excel uh, template of a, a basic program. And then once you learn from the programs that other strength conditioning coaches have written write your own basic program. I mean it can be as simple as just going on notebook paper and then drawing lines and columns and then thinking like week one, week two, week three, week four and then putting on the top of the page in season soccer and then deciding what exercises and what progression schemes is appropriate based on the NSCA recommendations. Start simple, you don't have to have some like crazy Excel document, really understand the basic concepts and then just keep improving on those programs. Alright guys, so I hope that was helpful. Uh, feel free to subscribe to this channel.